one of my favorite things to do is go to Dollar Tree and find items that I can create into high-end decor, and that's exactly what we're doing today. This is such a great time of year at Dollar Tree because they put out so many new items. I was excited to find these bead wreaths. Now these are definitely a new item. They come in three different versions. There's a natural wood one. They also have like this mid-tone stain and then a darker version. I'm gonna get the mid-tone wood color and I picked up two of these wreaths. I'm also going to be getting at Lowe's some plywood. I just got a small board that I could use for this project because I wanted to make a tray. So I'm gonna start by putting my bead wreath down on my board and then I'll trace a circle around it. And I magically cut this out with my jigsaw. I wanted to stain it. Now I wanted to go with a darker stain for this board so I picked one of my darker wood stains. I put on one coat of stain with a foam brush. I'm gonna wipe off the excess with a paper towel. Now after I did that, I realized this stain was not dark enough, so I actually came back in with another coat, let that sit on for just a minute or two, and then wiped off the excess. If you wanted it darker, just go in with another coat of your stain. To construct my tray, you're going to need E6000 and two of these wood wreaths. I'm gonna put a layer of E6000 all around the edge of my tray, and then I will place down my first wreath. Then I added E6000 to each and every one of my beads and put my second wreath on top. Now there was two metal portions to where the bead wreath connected. I put those right next to each other. Then I had some faux leather twine and I'm just going to hot glue that onto those metal pieces and start wrapping it up just to cover up that metal and then I'll add some hot glue to hold it in place. That just kind of finishes off the tray. And here's a look at how I styled my tray. Pinterest put out a list of their top projected trends for 2023, and they said mushrooms were definitely gonna be a popular item in home decor this year. So I wanted to do a project with mushrooms. I went to the thrift store, I found two glass bowls that were decorative, and then I also found two vases. Now the trick whenever you're picking up your vases is you want a vase that is smaller on the top and gets a little bit wider at the bottom. You can see I had two different variations to it, but they both are gonna work for this project. Project. So the first thing you have to do is remove all of your stickers and then I rinsed and cleaned these vases really well and made sure that they were nice and dry. Then I used some E6000 and I put it on the top portion of my vase. And then I'm gonna set my bowl on top. And then I repeated those steps for my other vase. Now you wanna let your E6000 sit overnight because it does take a while to set up. You could definitely paint these if you wanted. I love the look of them with the clear glass. And I'm gonna show you how I styled them in my home. I'd love to know what you guys think down in the comments. Let me know what you think of this decor trend. I wanted to show you guys a really fun paint technique you could do with Dollar Tree items. So what you're going to need to pick up is a mini broom from Dollar Tree. You're also going to need some kind of vase. Now my vase is from the thrift store and this thrifted vase looks great, but I was going for something a little bit different. So I wanted to paint it the colors that would work in my home. I wanted it to be a really dark green color. I didn't have a dark green color on hand, so I'm gonna mix the color fern with a black paint color and then that's gonna give me a really deep green color. And I'm just going to use a brush and paint one coat on the entire vase. Let that paint completely dry. Then when it has a chance to dry, you're gonna do our next paint technique with that mini broom that you picked up. So you need some kind of flat plate. You could use a paper plate or anything you have, and you're going to put a little bit of white acrylic paint onto your plate. Mix it with just a tiny bit of water. You want your paint to have kind of a really runny consistency. 
Now here's the fun part. You're going to take your brush and you're going to dab it into your paint. Then you're going to slowly paint and draw a line down your face. This is going to add a really fun textured effect. And the cool thing is you can add as much texture or as little as you want based on how much paint you add. So you can keep dipping it into the white paint and adding it to your face. Now, once I got done doing this, I felt like it was a little much. I wanted to mute the colors a little bit. So I put some of that green and black paint on another plate. And then I just dipped my brush back into that paint and I'm just going to put that on top. That's just going to mute down my texture a little bit, but this is personal preference. I love paint techniques like this because you can completely customize it to the look that you prefer. Let your vase dry completely and I'll show you how I styled it in my home. If you've made it this far in the video, thank you so much for watching. Comment the word of the day, which is home decor. Dollar Tree now has an eco-friendly section on their website and I was really drawn to these pencil organizers. I picked up three at my Dollar Tree. I wanted to create an organizer that I could set out on my desk so I started by removing all of the plastic on the organizers. Now Dollar Tree also has materials that you can use with your Cricut and they have this faux leather material. So I'm gonna use the one in the black faux leather. I started by figuring out exactly where I wanted to add my leather. I'm going to fold the leather over and then I'm gonna cut on that line as straight as possible. Now I went ahead and tried to wrap it around my organizer and realized I didn't have enough space to cover the entire thing on the back. So I cut an additional piece that I could put on the back. Then I hot glued all three of them together so that they sat nicely in a row. I started by hot gluing my piece on the sides. I didn't add any hot glue to the front because I felt like it would look nicer and I wouldn't see that hot glue mark on the front. Then when I got to the back, I added in my filler piece on the back with some hot glue and then I wrapped it around making sure that my leather was at the same level on the back. Once I was done hot gluing, if I had any extra pieces I needed to cut off at the bottom, I just cut those off. And then I filled this with some markers that I could leave out on my desk. So next I'm gonna show you how I created this really minimal wreath that's perfect for this time of year. So I'm gonna be using a wreath form from Dollar Tree. You can get these at most stores. I also picked up a bundle of wool off of Amazon and I'll link it for you down in the description box. I opened up the package and I'm going to cut two strips to go around my wreath. So I roughly put it around the wreath. I made sure it went about six inches past my wreath. And then I did two pieces that I could double up. So I'm gonna start at the top of my wreath and I picked a color that matched my wool. So I got out some yarn that was kind of an ivory cream color. And I'm gonna cut off a piece of that and I'm gonna tie it so that my wool is attached to the top of my wreath. I did a triple knot on the back of all of my pieces of yarn. So once I had it tied in place, I just cut off any excess. And really when I'm done with this, you're not even gonna be able to see the yarn that I put on there. So then I roughly measured this. I did not measure it exactly because I wanted this wreath to look very natural. I'm gonna cut off another piece of my yarn. I'm gonna go down about three inches. That's about how far I put them apart. And I'm going to tie some yarn, making my wool a little bit scrunched up. I wanted it to look kind of like a ball on each of my little sections and I'm going to tie the yarn in the back cutting off the excess. I'm going to repeat those steps going all the way around my wreath making it about three inch sections. Now 
Now, once I got to the top of my wreath, I had to figure out, okay, how am I going to make this look continual? So what I decided to do was actually take the yarn, cut off excess, leaving about two inches, and I tucked it underneath, and I decided to just hot glue it in place. So I had the appearance of that ball shape that I had all the way around, but you wouldn't be able to see where I tied off any excess. And here's a look at how my wreath turned out on my wall. You love shopping at Dollar Tree? Consider following me at Liz from McDIY on Instagram. I post all of my behind the scenes shopping trips. I was excited to find this new wood easel at Dollar Tree. These are a really large size and are perfect for DIYs. So I picked up this easel and I'm going to update it just a little bit. So I have some wood beads that I buy off of Amazon. I'll link them for you down in the description box. I'm gonna hot glue these wood beads to the bottom of my easel just to kind of finish off the legs on the easel. After the glue dried, I wanted to spray paint this with a gold color. So I laid it on its side outside and I spray painted the underneath of my easel. Once that dried, I put it standing straight up and continued to spray paint it. I let that dry completely before I styled it. And to style this, I'm gonna use a print that I got at Dollar Tree. I'm gonna add that to my easel, but you could use any print that you have on hand. And this is an awesome easel. So I'm so excited Dollar Tree has these now. For my next project, I wanted to create a yarn bowl, but actually I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I'm gonna share with you what those are, so hopefully you don't make the same mistakes that I made. So what you're going to need for this project is some kind of bowl or dome. I found this one in the plant section at Dollar Tree and I thought it would be perfect because it was bendable. And I really still think this would be a good idea to use this. And you're also going to need a selection of yarn. I wanted mine to have like an ombre appearance so I picked out three green yarn colors that I had in my stash but go with whatever colors you want okay so here was my first mistake I decided to use Mod Podge I think if I was doing this again I probably would be using like a paper mache because I feel like that would have not stuck as much to my bowl the other thing I probably should have done was put some kind of plastic wrap down over my bowl at the end everything was kind of stuck together so so let me walk you through what I did. First, I cut off some yarn, I threw it into a bowl, and I mixed it with some Mod Podge and water. I completely coated my yarn, but you could switch this up and just use paper mache. You don't have to use the Mod Podge. And then I started at the top of my bowl and just started creating a pattern where all of the yarn was touching together. And I was trying to make it nice and tightly wrapped so that when everything dried, the yarn bowl would hold together. So I wrapped all of my darkest yarn around first. Then I repeated those same steps with my middle colored green. I mixed it with some Mod Podge and I added that to the middle section of my bowl. I did the same thing with the light color. Now, when I was putting the light color on, I was getting a little bit farther down my dome, so I had to flip it over to make sure the yarn was nice and connected. And it can have some holes in it, and honestly, you want some holes because it gives it more of an organic yarn look. But for the majority of your bowl, you want it to be connected together. Now I let this dry for honestly a couple of days before I came back to the project. Overnight would be fine. But what happened was when I tried to disconnect the plastic from the yarn, it was sticking together. So I think if I would have put some plastic wrap in between, it may have released better as well. So I definitely struggled with it. I was cutting the plastic, trying to yank it up. At some point I was thinking uh, this is gonna fall completely apart and it's not gonna work. 
eventually was able to get it completely off. And then from there I had to do a little bit of repair. So I had some pieces that had come apart. So I just added on some additional Mod Podge to kind of hold it in place, let that dry. And here's a look at this bowl. Now this is an organic bowl. You're not going to put a lot of things in there. You may be able to put one or two items, but it's just a fun decorative piece. <laughs> This time of year, all of the major paint brands will put out their paint colors of the year. And it's really interesting to see the different ones that are considered popular. One of the colors I loved was by the brand Sherwin-Williams. It was this color called Redend Point. It's this really pretty blushy mauve pink. I can't wait to use it for this year. So I picked up a sample. That's kind of one of my tricks. If you want to use paint in your home decor, just get a sample of it and you can use it for all your different projects. So when I was at Dollar Tree, I found these three vases, gorgeous, but I didn't like the color of them. I wanted them to be a little bit more matte, a little bit more modern. So I'm gonna use my foam brush to paint two coats of the Reden Point sample paint that I got onto these containers. I'm gonna let them dry between each coat and I love the way the color turned out. I'm gonna show you how I style them on my tray in a grouping of three. You can add in florals if you want to as well. Every time I do a DIY video, I come up with several projects that I want to do for the video. And I would say I usually have at least one or two, what do you think? Maybe two projects that fail on each video, Delaney? I feel like we always plan for there to be two that don't work out. And typically I leave those out of the video. I don't even tell you guys about these DIYs, but I thought, you know what? I'm going to start showing you guys some of my fails and let you know what I should have done better. So in case you're doing this project, you don't have that problem. This project was actually kind of a failure, but I think I know what I should have done better. I really wanted the look of this like polka dot vase. I had a blue vase that I had gotten from the thrift store. I also on Amazon bought these stickers and I placed them all around my vase. I was using the stickers as a template and then what I decided to do after that was spray paint my vase after I put all of the stickers on. About three coats of an ivory matte spray paint all around my vase. Then after it was dry, I came back in and removed all the stickers. As you can see on some of the stickers that I removed, they looked great. Like the lines were perfect. And then other ones, I just had all of this extra paint that was seeping through. It didn't look great. So I was like, okay, what am I going to do to fix this? So then I came back in and I got, you know, just this little like paint opener tool and I was scrubbing at it, like trying to get the paint off. I tried to use a wet paper towel and I wasn't able to remove it. And I realized that sometimes spray paint is actually harder to remove than just a regular chalk paint. So I think in order to make this project work, what I should have done was just use a chalk paint. I think that would have worked better. I don't think that the paint would have seeped under my stickers as well. So if I was doing this again, I would switch my paint up to a chalk paint. Also chalk paint's easier to remove than the spray paint is. So this one was a fail, but I wanted to show you guys how I would do it better if I was to do this project again. So let me know down in the comments which of these DIYs was your favorite. Don't be afraid to try that project you've always wanted to try and remember it doesn't have to be perfect. I hope you subscribe because I want to see you back here. Bye.